This recording is going to be over um, pairs of angles and looking at parallel and perpendicular lines and being able to determine the measure of angles based on what's given. All right, well, we first are going to review um, parallel lines. Um, parallel lines um, are lines that will go on forever and will never intersect. So looking at our little um, potato head figure there, our lines will never intersect if you if they can go on until forever and ever and the lines will never touch. So with parallel lines um, you can get you will be able to you, sometimes you'll see diagrams that look like this. You'll see two parallel lines and then you will see a line that's going diagonally through a parallel line. This diagonal line is called a transversal line. Okay, this transversal line then creates angles with our parallel lines. So you can see that um, it has created angle 3, it's created angle 1, angle 2, and angle 4. Okay, you can, you can, you can see that, it, 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 or this is be angle B, but um, we have notated him here with angle 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, with parallel lines, there's something called the alternate interior angles, and they are equal in measure. All right, well, what this means is that, let's dissect these words. Interior, interior, interior means the inside. Okay, so all of our angles here are in the inside of our parallel lines. Okay, all of these are, if you have these two parallel lines, they're in the inside there. So we're talking about all the angles that are in between our parallel lines. So let me draw this. So they're going to be in between our parallel lines, so in between our yellow lines. That's called an interior angle. They're in the inside. Now, it also says alternate interior angles have equal measure. An alternate means that it is across from each other. So you see here that 1 and 2 are in red and 3 and 4 are in green. That means that those are the angles that have the same measure. So angles 1 and 3 do not have the same measure, and angles 4 and 2 do not have the same measure. Only angles 1 and 2, and then angles 3 and 4. And you can see that by just remembering that, remember, our straight line equals 180 degrees. So to get a straight line, that would mean for the angles that are side by side to be equal, they would have to be 90 degrees apiece. Well, you can see right here that angle 1 is not 90 degrees, and you can see that angle 3 is bigger than 90 degrees. So you know that these angles are not the same. Okay? They are not the same. So that's how I like to remember whether or not um, my angles are equal. Let's look at this again. So what, what this rule states is that the alternate interior, interior angles are equal in measure. So this means that angle 1 and angle 2 equal the same, and angle 4 and angle 3 equal the same. Now, you can figure out what these angles are if you are given a particular measurement. So let's see. And I can only give you one of these measurements and you'll be able to find it. Now this is not going to be an accurate measurement by any means. This is just for you to understand that you can find the measure. I can see that angle 1 is less than 90 degrees. So we're going to say that angle 1 is 45 degrees. So if angle 1 is 45 degrees, we already know that angle 2 is 45 degrees because angle 1 and angle 2 have the same measure. Now, to find angle 3, 
we know that to get from this dot to this dot, our rotation has to be 180 degrees. So we know that 180 minus our already given um, angle of 45. So you, we are going to subtract this, so we're going to have to borrow. So 10 minus 5 is 5. 4 or 7 minus 4 is 3 and 1 minus 0 is 1. So angle 3 is 135 degrees. And if we know that 103, angle 3 is 135 degrees, we know that angle 4 is 135 degrees because our interior angles, our alternating interior angles are equal in measure. So we know that. Now looking at our little diagrams down here, if you draw a Z on the parallel lines, the angles on the inside by the points are the same. If you draw a regular Z. And if you draw a Z backwards, the angles that are by the points are the same. So that is a, another easy way to remember that those are the angles that are the same. So, Angles that are across from each other like this are equal. Now, there are, there are other rules that we have to remember. In this one, remember, this line right here is called our transversal. Alternate exterior angles are equal in measure. Now we're talking about exterior angles and not interior angles. So now we're talking about exterior, which exterior means outside. So now we are talking about our angles that are outside our parallel line. So here's our parallel line, okay? And we are talking about those angles that are on the outside of our lines. Okay, before we were talking about the inside and now we're talking about the outside. Now, it's the same thing, okay? It's the same exact principle here with our lines or with our angles. It says alternate exterior angles. Okay, so that means as you can see on our list here that angles 1 and 2 are the same, and angles 3 and 4 are the same because they are across from each other. And you notice again that if you look at angle 1, it is, you can see with your eye that it's similar to angle 2. If you look at angle 3, it's similar to angle 4. So if you are given that angle 1 is 50 degrees, you automatically know that the angle that's across from angle 1 is 50 degrees because they are equal in measure because that's what our rule says, equal in measure. So how are we going to find angle 3? Well again you know that this straight line equals 180 degrees, okay, this whole line. So we have to do 180, take away 50. That means that angle 3 is 130 degrees and because 3 is 130 degrees 4 has to be 130 degrees. Now as long as these two angles add up to 180 we did our math correctly. Alright, now, now we're talking about corresponding angles corresponding angles. So that means what we're doing is we're going to be taking the angles up here at the top and looking at the angles down here at the bottom. So if you have a measure of one of the angles at the top, you can find the measure of an angle at the bottom because it says that corresponding angles are equal. Okay, So that means
that angle 1 up here is the same as angle 2 down here. And you can see that it's the top angle, top angle. And then you have a bottom angle and a bottom angle. They are the same. Okay, and then you have, oh, can't use purple on that. <laughs> See if we can use blue. Yep. We have a top angle here and a top angle here. Then we have a bottom angle there and a bottom angle there. So that means that they are corresponding. Okay, so that means that measure of angle one is equal to measure of angle two. So measure of one, measure of two. They are the same. So this one is not as hard to remember. I don't think. Whoops. Because if you are just looking at the top part of your angle up here, okay, you just move them down. If you set these on top of each other, those are the same angles. So if you would just move this this down, it's the same angle. So it's I don't think it's very difficult to remember that. So Angle 7, angle 8, angle 1, angle 2, angle 5, angle 6, angle 3, angle 4. And what I like to do um, is I would just, um, what I like to do sometimes when I'm given these funky numbers that don't make sense to me, what I like to do is I like to rename them. So angle 1, 2, 3, and 4. And this would be angle 1, 2, three and four and when your numbers match up that means your angles match up so that's how I like to remember all right now we're going to move on to lines that are perpendicular and so remember perpendicular lines um, have a 90 degree angle and if you have these perpendicular lines like this and you have a ray that's in the middle that's called your transversal line in here Okay, so with your 90 degree angles, there are also rules. So we're going to be talking about complementary angles. And our complementary angles are two angles whose measures add up to 90 degrees. Okay, so that means that when you're, when you're given this shape right here, you see that this angle is 79 degrees. Okay, this one is 79 degrees. So we want to find out what this angle measurement is. Well, we know that angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 90 degrees. And we know angle 1 is 79 degrees. So 79 plus something equals 90 degrees. So we need to do 90 minus 79. We're going to subtract Okay, so that means that angle D is 11 degrees. Now over here, this is 43 degrees right here, so we need to figure out what letter C is. Well, we know that 43 plus C equals 90 degrees, so we know that 43 plus C equals 90 degrees. So this is just like your equations. We're going to subtract 43, subtract 43, So C equals 47 degrees. So complementary angles are 90 degrees. Supplementary angles are angles that add up to 180 degrees because they form a straight line. So what I like to remember is supplementary starts with S and straight starts with S. So that's how I remember supplementary angles have to add up to 180 because straight and, and supplementary both start with S. So we have the S and S. Alright, so they have to form 180 degrees. So that means that angle 1 plus angle 2, so angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 180. So down here on our diagram, if we know that this angle is 151, we know that 151 plus A 
equals 180. That's what we know. So let's figure that out. We're going to subtract 151 from both sides. So 7 minus 5 is 2. So angle A is 29 degrees. And you can check that. It's always good to check. 10, 6, 7, 8, 1. So 180. Now over here, we know that 80 plus B equals 180. So we're going to subtract 80 from both sides. We get 100 equals B. So B equals 100 degrees. So again, remember that supplementary and straight go together. Complementary and 90 degrees go together. I have no um, analogy to give that um, analogy to give to you to remember. But what I like to remember is that um, if I can remember that S is for straight, supplementary, and straight, I can remember then that complementary is 90. The last one is um, adjacent angles. Okay, and these are going to be adjacent angles. Okay, adjacent means um, across. And if I say the house is adjacent my house, that means it's just um, across from my house. So adjacent angles are two angles which share the same vertex. They share a side but do not overlap. So right here, angle angle A B or angle um, angle one here um, is adjacent to angle two because they share this side. They share a side, they share a vertex, and they do not overlap. Okay, so overlap means that if we had this angle, angle one is not adjacent to ang angle ABC. Okay, so angle one, we'll say this is D. So ABD is not adjacent to ABC because they overlap. So because this entire angle overlaps with angle one right here, if that makes sense to you. So um, they are not adjacent. They are only adjacent because this angle shares a side with this angle and they do not overlap and they have the same vertex. So looking at our shape down below, E is our vertex. So we need to find some adjacent angles. So AEC can be adjacent to CEF. Okay, so that means that this angle and this angle can be adjacent because it shares the same vertex, it shares a side, and they do not overlap. So that is one adjacent angle. Okay, if we're starting at, if we're starting here, we can go F E B, and we can go B E D. So these two are adjacent because they share the same vertex and they share the same side. So those are adjacent. and these angles are adjacent because they share the same side and they share the same vertex. Hopefully this has helped you understand how to um, figure out the measure of an angle and what angles are equal angles based on what the picture looks like. If you still need help with this you can look back at your lesson, um, written lesson or call your teacher for help.